All right, hello, hello everyone. Welcome, let us go ahead and get this chat out here. And then let me put that over there, put this over here. And let's get started, hey everyone. Welcome to the live stream, hello Paulus. Thank you, thank you. So this is a live stream I do every Thursday where I basically go over what it's like to be a data analyst and answer any questions that you guys might have. So a couple of disclaimers, uh, let me just get my charger real fast. So a couple of disclaimers. Um, so I am, my name is Shashank. I work as a data analyst in Seattle and I uh, have only worked in the United States. I've talked to people all around the world, but I've only worked in the United States. So. Any uh, advice I have, um, some of it might be a bit specific for the US, but feel free to ask me anything. The more I ask around, the more I realize that um, it's really this, like a lot of it's the same globally, but there's certain things that might be a little bit different. So thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, sorry, I'm just charging my phone right now. Let's see, allow. Um, all right, and let us, where is the YouTube app so I can see how we are performing today? Well, it'll just be very, being very slow right now. All right, so. I don't know why it's not running. All right, so let me, oh, hey, what's up, Abigail? Hey, JJ, hey, Amanda, Ashmeet. All right, let's go down the questions. Amandeep, so let's do some data cleaning today on Python or SQL. Yeah, actually, I think that would be a, uh, that, that's definitely another video I'm gonna be coming out with. So I should let you guys know, I joined a kind of like network of creators recently. So you'll, you'll start to see some really cool videos coming out that I wouldn't otherwise be able to make because some of these people got some like really big time sponsors who are not so transactional with their relationships with their uh, creators. So normally when you get a sponsor, what happens is um, they come and they look at the last 10 videos you've done, see how your performance is on those 10 videos, and then offer you a rate and then give you like a link to convert people. And in that process, uh, you know, it's super transactional because they're only willing, th th your rate will change basically depending on how the last 10 videos performed. And the way I like to do my videos is I kind of just put out whatever I find interesting, whatever I think would be good for people to like learn, uh, which isn't always stuff that'll perform very well. So this new group, luckily because I joined them, they have a much, uh, they have the sponsorship of much larger companies who are not so transactional in their dealings with YouTube. There's nothing wrong with being transactional, you know? I mean, it, it is an investment, but because they're so large, they kind of just want like to be in the namespace of data science. And so it'll be a uh, more, it'll be a much easier uh, type of sponsor to work with. All right, so, uh, and, and so we're gonna have some interesting videos. I'm gonna have a video out next week and the week after because I have um, commitment dates with sponsors on those two uh, weeks, so get excited, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. And actually, I wanted to, um, I wanted to first let you guys know uh, this is all possible because of you guys, and thank you guys so much. All right, so I will get to the questions right now. Okay, so, Grand Sing Music. I have a data analyst interview for a crypto firm. Oh, Kraken, okay, cool. Uh, technical conversational second round, a little nervous. Nervous about the technical side. What can I do to prepare? So Grand Singh Music, have you seen my video with Nick Singh? Go to uh, my channel. So Singh spelt like the Punjabi way. So you go over here, your channel, and then under videos, uh, we can, I don't know, maybe I have to zoom out. There we go. Oh, can I not? Search. Or how about this? You can type in Shashank Nick Singh. Should be the first result. So this one over here has a lot of information on like just little tidbits and stuff you can do uh, in order to boost your um, likelihood of getting a job even at the interview step. So let's go ahead and put Grand Singh Music over here. Great question. This video does, uh, doesn't have as many views, but it, which kind of sucks because there's like a lot of great uh, information over here. So just as a heads up. But what else can you do to prepare? Um, I would say make sure you know, like, Pandas data, well, I mean, I guess it depends, right? You can always ask ahead of time, like, what is the technical interview gonna be over? Because I think it's bad practice for a company to like blindside you and be like, oh, like, you're, we're just gonna test you on something, we're not gonna tell you what it is. So make sure you ask ahead of time, like email them right now and ask them like, is it a SQL interview? Is it a Python interview? Is it like Python Pandas? Um, Cause you have a, uh, I would say basically almost a right to like know that. SJ, hello, hello. I'm currently a, in a role as a data analytics manager in a government position, however. Nervous around the technical tech runs can be. 
first ever tech round at a tech company. Well, best of luck to you. And let me know if I answered your question. So, hopefully I answered your question. Okay, for some reason I can't scroll on this. Uh, okay, let's exit this and let us pop this back out. There we go. Okay, awesome. Hopefully that answered your question. And I will get to the other questions in a second. So next, Natalie uh, Zadro, um, Zadrozna. Is that how you pronounce it? Hello, thank you so much for joining again. Okay, so Neb Santos, what's the difference between a multiple regression and Excel versus Python where you get the same results in residuals? So the thing is, if you do multiple regressions, even in Python using different packages, you might get slightly different results. Um, I think if you use like SciPy, SciPy has one, versus using um, Scikit-learn, the results will be slightly different. So let's see. Multiple regression, Excel versus uh, SKLR. That's what we want to look up, right? Let us see if we get the same results. Oh, I don't know. I can't read that. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, you can. So, yeah, with SK Learn, you can change the parameters and the default parameters might be different as well and what i'm seeing in this article over here let's so get to the results hopefully a section over here with the results ah okay there you go so I don't know if it's the exact same or not because the parameters might be different, but what, what you might want to do is use sklearn because you can change parameters a lot more of, um, in a much more fine-tuned manner than you can in Excel. I personally haven't used Excel for multiple regression in a long time. I just use sklearn whenever I need to. So hopefully that helps answer your question, uh, Nev Santos. So at Nev Santos, let's go ahead and put in that question. Uh, how's your week been? Pretty good, pretty good. I got put on uh, as like kind of like a tech lead for a new uh, product we're working on at Nordstrom. So that's fun. That's um, it's been really interesting to try and take something so broad and like break it down into its constituent parts. I can actually be like put into like a Jira ticket. Um, but yeah, we'll see how how that goes. Hey, Fars under the universe. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. Yes, Paula is, exa or Paula is exactly right. Go ahead and smash that like button. Show support for the stream. Let me get some uh, coffee in here. Hatem halal, uh, halal. Hey, hello. What are your thoughts on SPSS, Stata, and uh, SAS packages for data, analysis, uh, data analysts? So I personally have never used them, but a, a lot of my coworkers have, and I've never heard a good thing about them. Um, so in my secondary experience, my third-party experience, I would say just go ahead and learn R or Python. Um, if you're really, if you really need to do the hardcore stats, then like R is probably your best bet. Abigail Tavar, hello, hello. Uh, Ashmeet Sharma, how to become a data analyst? So, for anyone wondering, I, I don't know if I did. I put it in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe I didn't. Yeah. So, um, guys, before you ask questions, make sure you check the um, description of the video, and uh, you know that's just like in general when you go to live streams, you should do that uh, because the the description will have a lot of information on like you know, questions that the person has gotten a lot, questions, because I do this like weekly, right? So there's a lot of questions that come over and over again. So um, over here, what's his name? Ashmeet, um, how to become a data analyst. There is a video called Data Analyst Roadmap down here. Go ahead and click on that and you can learn how to become a data analyst. It's a pretty thorough video. Uh, others, hello, hello, Amandeep. What projects do you suggest will add portfolio to a fresher who is looking for a job? So Amandeep, what are you interested in? Okay, Abigail, I got a, uh, so sorry, uh, I'm a deep, um, to be clear, what projects you should do, so there's no cheat code, and I, I think a lot of people are like kind of looking for like cheat codes to get in, get like jobs and stuff. I wouldn't say there's no, there, there's no such thing as a cheat code, quite honestly. It's not, it, this isn't like school where like, oh, this is the best resource, you studied this resource, you'll do, you'll do really well. When it comes to like projects, um, I always say whatever you can talk about the most knowledgeably and the, in the most interesting manner at an interview will be the best project. For me, it's something like cars. I love cars, so any project to do with cars, you know, is going to be really, it will, will be a really good one for me to do. So, um, what are you interested in as, as a subject? All right, Abigail, let's see. I got an offer for a data scientist at a startup. Awesome, great stuff. Base pay is lower than average, and although this is my first job after undergrad, wondering if you have any advice on negotiations. So, and then I think you put a follow up after that. Okay, 
also I'm being considered for BizOps at another startup and I was interviewing for data analysts. I guess I did better at the case study than tech. How much overlap does this have with data science? Uh, okay, so Abigail, to answer your question, how much lower than the averages? Are we talking like 10%? Are we talking like 20%? Um, I would tell you, if you want to become a data scientist, um, it is not a bad idea to take a lower paying job right out of, oh, um, a lower paying job right out of college. One more question. Do you have high interest student loan debt? Um, that might be a very important um distinction as to how like you know important this is so for example i graduated with student loan debt in like in the 12 percent basically um which in the u.s is very very high interest for a student loan debt and so making as much money as quickly as possible was very important for me um so that that's one consideration i would say is very uh, important for people especially in the, in the united states um one other thing i would say is uh yes do you want to become a data scientist in the future and is this like are you talking like People, someone's offering like forty thousand dollars for a, a data scientist position. Because if they're offering forty thousand dollars for a data scientist position, that that's a really big red flag in my opinion. So, oh, offer is eighty five, solid. Um, so okay, so average is one. And Abigail, do you have a uh, master's degree? That's an important question too, because when you say average, right, one fifteen. My understanding is one fifteen. That is a median of people across the entire experience spectrum. Uh, of which, given that you just graduated, you would have zero years of experience, right? Um, so, and, and is it in Texas? Because if you're saying it's in Texas, 85K, in my opinion, is a very solid uh, um, starting salary. Um, if the only way you could really increase that, in my opinion, is if you go to like California Big Tech or something like that. But um, no, I'd say 85 is an excellent starting place. Like, you, as a new graduate, I would not have had any trouble making 85K work personally. So I think that's a great way to, a great place to start. But yeah, the real question is, do you have a master's degree? If this is coming straight out, straight out of a bachelor's, I think go for the data scientist position, especially if like you've like asked what work you'll be doing and it's like real data scientist work. All right, what do we have here? We got Mohammed. Uh, hello, Mohammed. Farzan, looking forward to more content here. Thank you so much, Brandy. Good morning. Good morning, um, Brandy. Th you're you were here last time. It was your first time here? I remember, I remember that. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, Cheese. Uh, Arun Kumar, do you have any good data analyst project for my CV? Maybe I should have a video that just like explains what like the best data analyst project would be. Um, so I would give you the same answer I gave to uh, Amandeep above there. Like, you know, you need to look at um, what are you interested in and do a project on that. No, just bachelors. Uh, also, that's true, it's the median. Just looked on Ga at Glassdoor, it's remote or in Pittsburgh, they offer me pay like that for the first year and equity options okay um the equity options i would uh take that with a grain of salt because it um could take like 10 to 10 to 15 years for you to actually like cash out on that equity um so i mean you know look at what stage the startup is in like i, I think even airbnb like airbnb was one of the most successful companies in the world and they didn't like ipo they had to be forced to ipo basically like the the staff had to basically be like we want our like options cashed out um i think paula said something yeah, yeah, Paulus is exactly right. I think $85,000 is more than enough for someone with a bachelor's degree in Texas to start off with. Because, I mean, you said remote, right? And you do live in Texas. Um, as long as you don't live in Austin, in my opinion. And, I mean, I mean, you could even make 85 k work in Austin, quite honestly. Um, I would say that's, a, like, first of all, congratulations. That is awesome. I My first job was $55,000 out of college. So you're doing amazingly. Uh, data scientist title, that is great. And, uh, yeah, no, I think that, yeah, you have a... Um, you have an awesome offer on the table. Just make sure that the work you're doing is actually data scientist work, that's all. But I think that, that I would call that a great offer. All right. Let's see what the next question is. Oh, thank you so much, Paola. Uh, why do most data engineer resumes are more towards data scientists? So Rajesh, when you say this, what, what specifically do you mean? Like, so this is a really broad statement. Um, and you know, you and I both have very different experiences in life, right? So without being more specific, I can't like, I, I don't really know what you're talking about. So uh, could you be a bit more specific about that? Jacob, hey, Shashank, I would like to do some forecast predictions and mathematical models. Is a part of the job of a data analyst? What should I learn? So I would say a data analyst 
um, will not be doing this stuff at, in any like advanced capacity for the most part. Now, that being said, the good thing is as a data analyst, you're working like side by side with data scientists and you're working with a lot of data, right? So there's no reason you couldn't do this yourself. You won't be asked to do it, but there are a lot of opportunities to do it yourself. So I'm going to be coming up with a project soon where I use Facebook Profit for something, uh, even though it's not really part of my job description, right? So. Um, what should you learn? Um, first of all, regressions. Regressions are going to are going to be your best friend, um, and you always start off with regressions because they're very easy models to explain to people, uh, and then you build up from there. Usually, um, there's this great podcast I listened to recently from data science leaders, which talked about a guy, a data scientist who who helped operationalize models in uh, at J.P. Morgan Chase. And the thing is, when you work in banking, uh, especially in uh, yeah, when you work in banking. You have to have models that are extremely explainable because you have to be able to go to regulators and say, this is exactly how this model chose not to give this person a loan. So, for example, if your model says, I'm not going to give a loan to, um, you know, a uh, 50-year-old Hispanic lady, then you – and, and you, you could be sued for that. And your company needs to be able to explain very clearly why the model was not discriminatory based on, like, gender, based on race, based on any number of other – or um, age – and so people usually start off with a linear model and then build up from there because linear models are really easy to explain and you go up and up and up from there. So um, I would say if you're not working with linear stuff already, go ahead and start off with that. Hey, Shashank, great to see you again. Great to see you again. All right, let's make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's see. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, no, first of all, congratulations. I think, I mean, if you have time, if I were you, just keep applying, see what else like lands on your plate. Um, but that's a really good offer. And and one more thing I should also say, uh, Paula's, uh, Paula's exactly right. Like, at the end of the day, there is nothing wrong with you switching out companies every year or two for the first five years of, our, of your career. In fact, I, I would actually say, like, you kind of have to in order to get the kind of salary raises that, like, um, people get these days. So... Um, yeah, definitely. I would. I would not say that there's any problem with that. All right. What do we have next? Thank you so much, Brandy. I'm glad that uh, that's helpful. All right. What? Uh, Let's see. Post Barone. Okay. Your day in the life of a data analyst is the best day in the life video I've seen on YouTube. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And what I actually want to do next is I actually got a video. Um, oh, actually, yeah. You know what? Let me let me send that to you guys. Uh, Shashank, day in the life of a data analyst. Hmm. It's like way down here. Hmm. Also, if you guys see any other creators like this that you want me to collaborate with, let me know. Um, there are a couple who make some really good content that I'd like to collaborate with. Okay, let me go over here, videos. If you guys haven't watched already, I have this video over here where I literally recorded myself for eight hours uh, and made a video about it. And I now, um, I so I use iMovie, right? Day in the life of a data analyst. So I uh, use iMovie, right? So iMovie is like not, I mean, it's great. It's better than whatever comes by default on Windows computers, but it's like not that amazing. And um, so what happens is I got DaVinci Resolve recently, which is supposed to be more advanced. So I can like probably like blur out specific sections of my screen and everything. And I'm going to try the same video again, but I'm literally going to record it for eight hours, like instead of doing a time lapse and see if I can give you guys a better view of what's going on. And I'll see if I can, like, talk to the camera, like, as I'm working. I saw another video where someone did a great job. Like, she talked to the camera as she was working. All right. Do da uh, data structures and algorithms important for data analyst roles in interviews like fang companies? I don't know about fang companies specifically, but data structures and algorithms are not, a, not important for data analysts, in my opinion. I think that... Um, I mean, you know, you, you have your obvious ones, right? Like, you know, your lists, your arrays, stuff like that. Like, make sure you know that stuff, but, like, not, like, the, the kind of stuff that, for example, um, computer scientists have to know or computer engineers have to know. Luke Barus, collab with him. I'm actually in contact with the guy. Really, really cool dude. Um, yeah, super cool to talk to. Uh, very down-to-earth. Very, uh, uh, not, not saying that the people I hang out with, uh, like, that I, like, talk to at, like, work and stuff aren't down-to-earth. He's just very different. Um, so it's fun talking to him. All right. 
Alex the Adels would be really cool. So actually, um, what I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys know any smaller creators that I could collab with? Um, because uh, Luke Bruce and like Alex the Analyst and stuff, I, I definitely want to do stuff with them, but they're quite large, right? They already have like their audiences and everything. I would like, I, I feel like my channel, right, is the, the scale we've reached is 90% luck, 10% skill. I'm more than willing to admit that, right? Like I, I had that one video that did really, really good. Um, what I would like to do is offer, and, and I got like, like really lucky that the algorithm like picked up that one video. I would like to have a, a chance to like give someone else a platform who's like making great videos, but maybe they, the algorithm just hasn't really caught up on them. So if you guys have any suggestions for like smaller creators, let me know. These bigger creators are awesome, um, but I'm also like very well aware of them. Collab with Richard on data. I don't know if I know Richard on data. Ah, perfect. Yeah, no, this is yeah, this is perfect. Like seventeen thousand subscribers. I think that uh, I'll check out his videos. See if uh, the only thing is, it looks like he hasn't posted recently. That's the only thing. So, but I will check out what he has and see if he's interested. Oh, and he does R. Perfect. Okay. Collab with Telusuko from India. Who is Telusuko? Is he like a data analyst guy? 1.6 million subscribers. Dude, this guy won't even talk to me, man. There's no way this guy will even talk to me. I have trouble getting getting a hold of people with 100,000 subscribers. Seattle data guy. I do know that. I do know him. Um, that's actually, that would be a pretty good idea. All right. So let me go back to answering y'all's questions. And if you haven't already, make sure you smash the like button on this video. And make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way we can get to 150,000 subscribers. That's what we're looking for right now. Joseph Lee, 2.40 a.m. here in Australia. was wondering why I was never able to catch any of your streams. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, well, welcome, Joseph Lee. Actually, okay, wait. Um, so we have a couple of people from Australia. There is one... There's one data scientist from Australia. I think her name is, like, Candace or something? Candace Data Science... Uh, let's see, Candace, data scientist. I think it might be spelled with an I. No, I don't see her over here. Data scientist Australia, maybe? I'm pretty sure she's a data scientist. Ah, oh, a Vivian, candidly Vivian. Okay, yeah. So she's an Australian creator. So I might go. Um, she might be someone to collaborate with as well. Like I saw some of the work that she did, and she does some pretty interesting stuff. How is the mentoring project going on? It is going on slowly. It is difficult to find time to like you know block out a schedule for that and everything. But I will get on that. So I do apologize. I know I have like a lot of like uh, irons in the fire and everything. But uh, between like the full time job and um, uh, the consulting and this, it's kind of hard to get everything like off the ground. But I will definitely work on it. Difference between data scientists and data analysts. Usually I'd say it's the depth of analysis done. A data scientist will usually work with data that doesn't exist. So for example, at Nordstrom, uh, we had this thing like a traffic model, right? Where like we don't know at any given point how many people are in the store. So we had a data scientist create a model for that. Whereas a data analyst would go analyze that data after it's been created generally. So the thing is that the roles overlap on each other like a lot, but usually the depth of analysis done is the difference. And a data scientists usually work on creating data that doesn't really exist quite yet. So. And they have stronger programming skills. Ali Ama Ahmed is a good creator here. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, control C. Let's see what Ali Ahmed is. Uh, is he on YouTube? Is it this guy? Uh, doesn't sound like a data. I don't think it's this guy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see what else we got. I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything. Good luck, Al uh, Algodio, on your interview tomorrow. Good morning, Ho Sung Lee. Great to see you. Great to see you. I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything over here. Yes, uh, I have a video coming out next week on. Um, what do we call it? It is on, where are we? Excel for data analysts. So make sure you like this post over here. 
Um, it is going to be a yeah, it's it's a, it's a video on Excel for data analysts because I realize that that's kind of like the biggest gap in my like curriculum. I have a video on Python, I have a video on SQL, I have a video on okay, you will be hidden. Uh, I have a video on uh, oh, analyze with Ali. Okay, I know analyze with Ali. Yeah, 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 yeah. Analyze with Ali. Yeah, 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 I know this guy. Okay, I know. Yeah, I, I, actually, I should do something with him. That's a, that's a good point. Thank you so much, Nikhil Pandey. Um, but yes, so what was I saying? The I have a the I have a video on Python, on SQL, on Tableau, um, and probably something else on my channel. But those are like the three big ones I have on my channel. What I don't have is Excel for data analysts and. I, I should make a Power BI video in the future. Um, what I really need is I need Microsoft to sponsor me. Then I can make a Power BI uh, video. So I don't know how to send this to you guys to like, but go ahead and like this post as well. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Where are we next? R for data analyst. Yes, R is another gap I have. I do need to do an R thing. I need to learn R first of all, and then I can do R. Sam SL, what program would you use for predictive election analysis? I have demographics of, of counties and past results and want to predict how they will vote. Interesting, okay. So you have demographics for certain counties and you want to predict how they will vote. So that's a classification problem, right? Um, always start with logistic regression. Again, you always start with your simplest algorithms and then build up from there. So after you start off with your logistic uh, regression, I mean, you, you might just want to jump into a boosting algorithm and see what that does. Um, one question I have is how, ex how important is explainability for you, right? Because explainability will drastically reduce the number of models you can effectively use. Um, that being said, you know, you, you, can always, you can always use like shaft values and stuff to like make less explainable models more explainable, but that's something to consider. I always start with logistic regression and go up from there. Okay, so they said it will mostly be how I've used Python and SQL and how I decide to use either language. So yeah, in that case, I would uh, practice a bunch of like SQL questions, practice a bunch of like Python questions. Um, do ones on, if you're doing Python questions, make sure you do ones on like pandas manipulations. Just go manipulate like pandas data frames and stuff like that. Let's see, what am I missing? What are your computer specs, please? Um, so I have a Core i7 with an Intel, or with an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti. Um, it's the ASUS Zephyrus M16, and I have 512 gigabytes of storage. That's not nearly enough, um, because I game on this laptop as well. So I'm, I'm yeah, I game on this laptop as well. I, I'm really like a Mac guy, but um, you can't game on Mac, so, you know. Should I look for a job first as a fresher or should I go for an internship first? Uh, internships are a great way to break into the industry if you're having bad luck getting a job. Okay, cause eBay uh, Uche Chu Kuo. Hi, I got an IT job internship with a bank in my country. How do I prepare for the interview and hopefully get them to put me on their data science team? So I would, um, I mean, if you want to be put onto a team, right? I would always just say you want to be put onto a team. Like I got uh, put onto an IT team at my first job and I said I wanted to be in supply chain and the company was gracious enough to try and like dr like actively help me uh, get onto the supply chain team. I think a lot of companies these days realize that um, you're, you're like happy employees are more effective employees and putting people in like teams that they want to be on is uh, very, very important. And so, uh, you know, make sure you make that clear in, I would say somewhere in your interview, be like, yeah, at some point in time, I would like, like to be on the data science team or I'd like to, I have like an interest in data science and like maybe talk a little bit about like um, what like data science stuff you've done, what projects you've done, stuff like that. So does your girlfriend like what you are doing in your career? It's a good question. It's <laughs> an interesting question. I, I think she, so she kind of, she's one of those people who has a, those attitudes of like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. Um, so, and, and I think she is um, definitely like, you know, like proud of like what I've accomplished and everything, especially like, so we've been dating since college, right? So I, she seen me like, just like flounder through college and like, you know, seeing me get somewhere where I'm not floundering in life, I think is like, you know, uh, uh, good. Um, that being said, it's, I have been told I work way too much. Um, so it's something I'm trying to regulate a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Hello, hello. Uh, what am I missing? 
Do you ever look at some of your viewers' projects? Yes, so there was, um, someone tagged me on LinkedIn with a project that they had. It is really, really good, and I want to have them show up on the channel to like explain the project. I'm actually hoping to have that on next week. Um, but there's someone who tagged me on, on LinkedIn. So actually, if you tag me on LinkedIn, because it doesn't happen too often, that's usually the best way to like get my attention, and I'll like, look at whatever you have. So um, yeah, and, and it's a good way to like, you know, um, push your project forward too. And the good thing is when you tag me on LinkedIn, I have about 4,000 followers on LinkedIn as well. Usually I'll go like your post and then that drives a lot of attention to your post as well. Like I, I think that's what drives attention. I'm not 100% sure, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but um, that's a good technique if you wanna get some attention on your projects. What program, would, okay, I answered this one. Varun, hi Strong, loved your roadmap videos, truly amazing. Well, thank you so much. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, will your SQL guide you've covered on your YouTube be enough for entry-level positions? It should. It should be enough for an entry-level position that's not like a data engineer or something. Please make a video on Power Query and the MS platform using data analytics. I'm only skeptical to do that because um, I'm only skeptical to do that because I don't believe data Power Query should be used in data analytics or in data analytics geared towards data science, right? Because the problem is it doesn't plug into the greater data science ecosystem, which is like runoff of Python and R and stuff like that, right? So Power Query is a really powerful tool. I just am hesitant. First of all, I don't know it, you know, like long short, I just don't know it, right? And there's no incentive for me as a, uh, as a uh, employee of like Nordstrom to really like learn how it works either because none of our teams use it. And so, Power Query is one of those things that I've been asked to do videos on and I'm skeptical to do it on just because it doesn't, like it's not used in data science, like like broadly speaking. Um, so, you know, that that's the only thing. Uh, tch, 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 tch. How to dump data insights from Jupyter Notebook to database using SQL. Um, SQL Alchemy, and you can just connect to a database and plug it in through there. Do you have any resources for interviews? I kind of do. Go higher up in the chat and look for the video with Nick Singh. Uh, or actually, I don't know if just be able to. Uh, ch -ch 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 -chunk, Nick Singh. Yeah, so go ahead and check out this resource over here. This is kind of like my interview guide. It's like the closest thing I have to one, honestly. I don't really have like an interview interview guide, but check that one out. Uh... What is your entry salary? So I made uh, $55,000 in Dallas, Texas at my first job. Uh, oh, okay. Ho Sung Lee, uh, may I ask you, wait, did you ask something before? Okay, no. Um, do you use PCA at work? What kind of dimensionality do you normally have in retail data? So retail data, we have dimensionality. I think ours are usually less than 50 columns. Um, I use PCA because I think it's one of the coolest techniques ever. Um, so yes, we, we do use PCA at uh, Nordstrom. We don't work with like, at, at least I don't work with like enormous data sets. Like um, I, I work with data sets with like usually less than 50 rows of, or 50 columns of data uh, and maybe like 10 to 20 million rows. Um, but yes, I do use PCA to try and reduce that to something more useful because a lot of the columns are kind of just repeats of one another. So like you'll have like order date and order number, you know, like that, those are, you know, very similar columns. Um, for the information in which they have. So yeah, yeah. I would say that that is uh, what I do. What games do you play at the moment? Um, I'm playing Doom Eternal right now. Uh, I downloaded the Phoenix uh, Ace Attorney trilogy because I used to love Ace Attorney as a kid. Um, and it turns out they had a couple more games come out in Japan in 2015 and just never dubbed them in the uh, for the US market. Um, so playing that right now. And yeah, that's usually, that's about all I have time for at the moment. Um, Cyberpunk's um, update 1.5 came out, so I actually want to download that and try it out. Um, Cyberpunk's an interesting game, so, you know, we'll see. Some guys use Excel to implement data mining theories, and that's really crazy. Yeah, that is insane, man. Like, it, it is... Excel is really cool because it's like a Swiss army knife, right? You can do all kinds of stuff with it, um, and it is crazy the level of, like, stuff you can do with, like, um, data mining over there. What am I missing? Do you have video on data automation in Python? Uh, have you checked my channel? Have you like used the search bar to like look for one? I'm not really sure if I have one. What course did you take in college and how many years? Uh, I have a degree in chemistry and that I took for four years and is completely useless today. Uh, 
Would you recommend getting a data scientist role in the U.S.? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a great, it's a very well-paid role. Um, I'd say software engineering is great and all, but I like the fact that data scientists are usually more well-connected to the business than software engineers are. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's a tremendous role. Is an M1 MacBook Pro, MacBook Air good for... Uh, so the TensorFlow certification, like I have the TensorFlow certification, no one has ever asked me about it. I think as a student, it might be helpful, but I've never, uh, I've never had like, like no one's ever asked me about my certification, even though I've had it for years now. Um, M1 MacBook Air good for deep learning? I think so. I, th I think TensorFlow is even like written in, written for the M1 now. So I think at the end of the day, like, I think M1 is the future in many ways. So I, I, it's a great system, honestly. What do you think about IIT? So for anyone that doesn't know, IIT stands for Indian Institute of Technology. Um, tremendous schools. My understanding is that their one uh, major fault is that they're not great, re they're not like world-class research institutions. Um, I, but this is like data I checked like five years ago, so it may not, not, it may not even be accurate. But like, I think what happens is like, just given that IIT like like gathers the most talented people in India, it like they the people that graduate from there are like next level talented. So. Um, how long did it take for you to job hop? So I was at my first job for one and a half years. I was at my, or, well, one year and 10 months, sorry. I was at my second job for less than a year and I've been at Nordstrom for just over a year right now. So um, I have not been at a job for two years yet. Let's see, am I missing anything? Tips on getting a remote job in the US, those are really hard. I actually find it's fairly easy today. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if any companies are like dead set on like, not allowing remote jobs. I mean, I'm I, I've been remote basically since the pandemic started. So, um, and, and and this is a field where like being remote is super friendly. So, uh, someone else maybe can correct me. Is it that hard hard to get a remote job in the U.S.? When is a video related to Excel? I will set a reminder uh, next Thursday. So the twenty fourth is when it's coming out. What is the salary compared to a software developer for a data analyst? Significantly lower. Um, yeah, yeah, like maybe. I mean, it depends on where you're working, right? Like I'd say like, you know, in some places you can make three quarters of what a software engineer makes. In some places you'll make one half or one third of what a software engineer makes. If you want to make money, software engineering is where you need to be going. Like if, if you want to make a lot of money, like as a data analyst, you can make solid money too, but like you'll make a lot more money as a software engineer for sure. Data analyst certifications, which ones? Uh, the IBM one and the Google one are great. Trying to transition from big four accounting to data analytics, how realistic is that? Hey, or, uh, Eric Morais. Uh, I mean, dude, big four accounting is a pretty big deal. Uh, I think it's super realistic. I just think that you have to build out uh, Python and SQL skills. So I have a roadmap video linked in the description of this video. Go ahead and check that out. That one is uh, going to be very helpful on uh, for people like you especially because I have like tips for like all that, like stuff like that. Did you get mods yet? So actually, um, I, I had uh, two people message me about mods. I am I have to put together kind of like some like like uh, like a document for them saying like okay, this is what we need to like do and everything because there's a couple of things I want them to like highlight. I think at the end of the day, what I want them to do is like make sure that people aren't spamming the chat. I want them to pass questions to me, which means that I have to give them a list of like questions that have been asked a lot, and I need to give them a list of my videos, and I need to give them a uh, list of people who show up regularly. Because uh, if you show up to my live streams regularly, I want to like you know, like recognize you as like oh you're here like quite often. Let me answer those questions first. So uh, stuff like that. I need to just put together that documentation. I just like have not done it yet. So, uh, but I I do have some volunteers. If anyone else is interested in volunteering, uh, just go ahead and because it would be voluntary. Uh, Shashank Analytics. Go ahead and Instagram me at that address. Um, and also go ahead and just follow that Instagram. I'm trying to build out my Instagram following and my LinkedIn following because um, I can put like a lot more short form content over there more easily than I can on YouTube. How much mathematics is necessary for a fresher and data scientist? Uh, not that much. I'd say good good understanding of stats, though. DQL and Python. I don't know much about DQL. I would highly recommend SQL, though. All right. What am I missing? Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure you like the stream. Your thoughts on Ablebit's plugin for Excel? I think Ablebit's... The, the plugin is super cool. I've always wanted to get it. I just... Um, I don't use Excel enough to justify it, but if you use Excel that much, then I would say it's a great plugin to uh, have. 
Can business analysis and data analysis be compared? Yeah, yeah, they can be really, really similar. Like the, the thing is a business analyst, um, there's like, a, 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 what, more like a business intelligence. Business intelligence and data analysis can be compared more directly. A guy with pants, great to see you, great to see you. So he showed up on uh, my last live stream where I had a whiskey and was doing like an analysis on F1 data. Guy knows a ton about F1. All right, let's see how people are liking the stream. Just gotta make sure I'm not. Hmm. So what do we have here? We are at 99 watching. Okay, let's see if we can get to, uh, get that to 166 likes. Not bad. Not bad. How credible is a Google data? Google, sorry, Google certification course. It is a great course. I would just say it is uh, like don't like think that you like you do this you will get a job magically. Like that's not how it works. Um, but it is a great course. The only problem I have with it is that it's taught in R, and I personally um, suggest learning Python if you don't know either. That's where the IBM course is quite useful. They uh, teach you Python in that one. Yeet, this may be out of your expertise, but do you drink on weekends and does it affect your job? Yeah, so I'm very much a weekend drinker. Uh, so I don't drink. I, I, I don't want to get into the habit of having a drink every single day. That's just like uh, not personally something I want. Um, so I usually leave my drinking for the weekends um, where I'll like go out with friends and we'll like, you know, have like a crazy night or something like that. Uh, and I, I do want to do that as long as I can because like, you know, eventually I'm going to reach an age where like, like everyone I talk to, right? You eventually reach an age where you just like physically can't do it, you know? Um, does it affect your job? No, not at all. Because I'm completely sober by the time I show up in the morning. I show up on Monday. Um, I would say though, like it, one funny thing is, like I know, like I've seen a lot of companies will have like beer at the office. Um, and the funny thing is, after one beer, I I don't work as effectively as like I'm not. I mean, I'm still like you know fully functional, but like I can't concentrate very well. So I find it interesting that people can like do that. But um, yeah, yeah, no, I drink on the weekends, and then like here and there on the weekdays, you know, every every once in a while. Um, in my apartment, for example, I don't have any beer because I don't want to get into the habit of, like, cracking open a beer at the end of every workday, personally. Um, mostly for health reasons. It's just not... It's just... I don't think that's healthy. Um, for, especially for someone my size. I'm, like, not that big. So, um, yeah. That is... Those are kind of, like, my drinking habits. How good does one need to be a Python to get a job as a data analyst? So, Gaurav, go ahead and check out my Python tutorial. I have a, a great uh, – like, if you know everything in that video, you'll have a good idea of, like, what you need to get an entry-level job in data analysis. Why is SQL important for analysis if you could just use R or Python? So what happens is a lot of data is stuck inside databases, and you need to get it out of databases. And usually you need to aggregate it before you can like get it out of a database, right? Like if you want to download 10 million records from a database, that is not going to be an easy um, ask to do. So you usually have to aggregate it. That's why you need to know SQL. Why did you decide not to pursue a career in chemistry? Um, it's just incredibly boring to me, uh, and it doesn't pay well at all. Um, in order to get paid well to get a job in the natural sciences, you basically have to have a PhD. Um, and even then, you know, it's debatable whether you'll be paid well or not. Um, it's not like corporate America, like data analytics, software engineering. Like these are jobs that like if you just get into – like there's so many opportunities to be paid really, really well. Um, you know, so that's like – yeah, that, that, that's one of the big reasons. Pay is not the only thing that's important for me, but there's a certain standard of living I personally want to maintain. You know, um, and that requires a pretty decent amount of money. Of course, no problem, Yeet. I love uh, I, I love interesting uh, or I love like different questions too. Everyone talks about you know. Feel free to ask me anything. Yeah, yeah. So uh, advice for anyone asking questions on this: read the description. If your question's not answered by the description, then feel free to ask me just about anything. Uh, so Minecraft Jesus game. Let's see what. Okay, Big O Theta. Do not need to know that for um, data science or data. Uh, um, analysis because what happens a lot of the time right like if you're like a data scientist you'll go develop an algorithm you'll develop it in python and yeah you'll you'll have to like know how to like make good python code and stuff but like if speed is really that important and if like software design is that important usually a company will have machine learning engineers or like software engineers convert your python code into c plus plus and they'll fix a lot of your mistakes so um i would say it's not too important i'm gonna have a sql midterm today do you think you could help well i have a sql um 
uh, video on my YouTube channel. Highly recommend watching that. Outside of that, I mean, I ne I've never taken a course on SQL, so I don't really know. Any tips on internships? Get them. Internships are like your magic ticket to getting a job in the industry, 100%. Do you play any video games? Yeah, currently I play um, the Ace Attorney trilogy um, and Doom Eternal. Uh, I wanted to get into a racing simulation game. I've heard, I've heard Assetto Corsa is really good. Um, like I wanted to buy one of those like really expensive setups and stuff and like get one of those because I. So for anyone that doesn't know, I've been meaning to buy a Toyota Supra. Um, I've been talking about it for a couple of months now. But then after I moved to Seattle, parking in Seattle is three hundred dollars a month. So. Even if I get the Super, which is an expensive car, the car itself is like 50k, um, with it without like the markups that dealers are charging right now, right? You know, $300 a month. I don't feel comfortable paying that for parking. You know, like at least if I'm paying for the car, like I own something at the end of it, but any money I pay for parking just goes down the drain. So, you know, Doom Eternal is an absolute banger, 100%. Do you do push pull ups or push ups? Uh, push ups. I do mostly push ups. Uh. In order to be a good data analyst, do you think it is needed to know Django? No, although it's useful to know it in order to create front-end applications. But I would even say, probably more importantly, I would just learn something like Streamlit if I were you. So don't worry too much about Django, in my opinion. Echo Flips, what motivated you to create a YouTube channel? I love the vids. Thanks for your help. Well, thank you so much. Um, lot, there's a lot of stuff that motivated me. Um, I've been on YouTube for like 10 years as like, a, like you know, very much a watcher. This is kind of like the second or third attempt at a YouTube channel. And um, I think for me, the big thing was like graduating with a degree in chemistry, not really knowing what I was going to do. So I didn't have a job for about a year after graduating. Um, and then kind of falling into analytics and realizing how great of a career space it was. And also realizing how like you don't need a formal education and anyone can really do it. And it pays quite well. Like. I comfortably make it the six figures now um, after just th like less than three years of experience, honestly. Like it is a career that comfortably pays very well um, and doesn't need a – like you do need like a degree, but you don't need like a formal education. And I wanted to spread that knowledge out to people. So um, I wanted people to have the opportunities that I didn't have where – or maybe I had them. I just wasn't aware of them. And so that's why I created this channel. Um, Yes, 100% a guy with pants. I will, I will. I have your, I think I'd be on LinkedIn or something. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Would you say that web scraping is a difficult task to understand or any tips on what to start with? If I were you, I would start off with like trying to, uh, trying with the requests library. Um, after that, you'll quickly have to graduate into Selenium and Beautiful Soup. So I would just go into YouTube and look up a tutorial. I actually have a couple of videos on my channel. Um, like, like just type in the word like web and then like it should show like web scraping stuff. And it's fairly simple. But the problem with web scraping is like websites change all the time. So, you know. Magna, great to see you again. Uh, hi, Shashank. Applying for a data and mentorship program as a mentee. Uh... Any tips to make the most of the experience? So just out of curiosity, um, what is, like, whose program is it? Do you know? Like, are you able to, like, tell me, like, whose or what program it is? I'm just curious to see what other programs there are out there. Um, tips to make the most out of the experience? I would say have very targeted questions. Um, and do a lot of research into the expertise of the specific mentor because we all have unique experience right we can all mentor only so well to a certain extent on different uh mentorship i mean on different like aspects of mentorship so i would say like make sure you have that um like down pat quite honestly matt what are your thoughts on being a data analyst in the medical field my degree path is data science with a concentration in bioscience so i was wondering if you could speak to this i'm excited for it um, data in the in the medical field, I think you're going to have a lot of interesting discussions about uh, PII, uh, personally identifiable information, and patient uh, information security, so like HIPAA stuff. Um, so you'll see a lot of hashed out data is what I would think. So even in retail, we see a lot of hashed data. So for example, like we have like the this ID for every single customer, but I can't see the name of the customer. Like I need to like get like a bunch of levels of clearance in order to like see customer names, for example, uh, if if I could even like you know do it. Um, 
the view data analytics checker out. Um, but yeah, so I would say that like medical medicine is an industry that unfortunately it moves very slowly. But when it moves, it moves with a lot of inertia. So there's a lot of opportunity to make great money over there. So I think it's a great place to enter right now. And health tech is getting big because so much of the industry needs to be like rethought. So I think you're in a good place. The view data analytics. Just ordered food, but I'm feeling <laughs> funny. Um, oh, Thu, is, is it like the Vietnamese name THU? Oh, interesting. Wait, this is perfect. This is like, if she posts regularly, then this is like exactly three months, three months, two months, one month, one month. Oh, no, this is great. Do you know where she's based out of? Wait, this is a great channel. Okay. Yeah, I'll see if I can reach out to her. You know, what you, let's see what her TikTok following is. A lot of people have like a lot bigger followings on TikTok and Instagram. Okay. Cool. What is she about? Economist turn. Oh, inter economist. Interesting. Okay. Based in the Netherlands. Cool. European. Always interesting stuff. Sweet. Yeah, I'll go check her out. But I like how it says United States though. All right. These lo oh uh, Brandy, I think you asked a question earlier. Uh, let me see if I can answer that. I saw it somewhere. Maybe it's a, can I just control F? Ah, okay. Do you have a video relating to building a portfolio? What types of projects would you expect to see from an entry level data analyst? So, a data visualization project is always a great way to start. After that, I would say a more deep analysis. I always tell people if you can find your own data and then from there, um, yeah, if you can like find your own data and then from there, like ask question after question, that is probably the best way to go about making a project. Uh, but a data visualization, like something with a visual component to it is probably something I would always look for. That is awesome. That's great to hear, Brandy. I'm glad that that's useful for that. These are useful for you. Did we get to a hundred? Okay, cool. We're at 104. Awesome. We want to get to at least 100 viewers every single live stream. Uh, Adidas Shamil, how much do you interact with data engineers at your company uh, on an almost daily basis? Because they're the ones that make sure I can get the data I need. Uh, and at Nordstrom, we're transferring like databases right now, and so the data engineers are like at the forefront of making sure that that data is actually available and like served up for us in a way that we can actually use. Live in Seattle. Cool. I'm from Seattle too. Or I'm not from Seattle. I live in Seattle. Um, interested to switch to a career in data analytics. How and where to start, please suggest. So I have a roadmap for data um, analysts in the description of this video. So go ahead and, go ahead and check that out. Um, Ruthvik PBS. I recommend you go ahead and check out uh, data.gov. That's an amazing place to get a bunch of great data. Tyler Silverman. Would it be okay if I start trying to get a DS job to have a side business for consulting? Doing data? Wait, what? Um, would it be okay, an okay idea, if I am trying to get a data science job to have a side business for consulting data science work on Fiverr? Been applying, but no luck. I think, I mean, that's exactly what I did, right? Event, like now I'm pulling out of the consulting game um, only because YouTube is a lot more um, rewarding and lucrative. Um, like no shade on consulting, but like I, I remember like, like, you know, leaving work. Um, I, I love my job at Nordstrom, but you know, you, you're building uh, applications and stuff for like, you know, someone else really. Um, which I, I'm totally cool with because I, I get to work with incredibly smart people and like a great team. Uh, but then leaving that and then going and doing consulting where I am building out applications for other people um, and I don't even have like the team or anything is definitely less uh, appealing to me. And I'm lucky enough that YouTube has kind of taken off for me and has become like, YouTube became profitable for me like this month basically. Um, like I've been making money on it for a while, but like it finally became like profitable this month. Um, but yeah, I was on consult. I did uh, Upwork on the side. Uh, I don't recommend Fiverr do Upwork. Fiverr is like a straight race to the bottom with rates. Um, so I would, and it's really good for like one-off gigs. Like I need to like set up a server. I need to like set up an AWS thing. Like that's what Fiverr is good for. But if you want to have like clients that actually like want you to do like advanced analyses and stuff like that, highly recommend Upwork. Marshall, great to see you. Okay, guys, I have to leave in one minute. Um, Starting on my first data and science project, your channel blocked the link, but I tried to show the Kaggle comp I'm entering. Uh, well, Marshall, um, go ahead and contact me on Instagram, and you can go ahead and uh, let's see, Sean Analytics. 
So you can go ahead and send me a link over there. I really wish that YouTube had a DM feature. All right, guys, I have to head out right now. So Natalie, when you say expensive, how expensive is it? Um, one thing I would always look for in a boot camp is to make sure that they have some form of a job guarantee. If they're not willing to put a job guarantee there, then I'm not sure it's really worth its salt. Um, and make sure the job guarantee also has like an income guarantee. So like some people have a job guarantee where they're like, oh, we'll just get you some job. But like if you're being, if you pay ten thousand dollars for a boot camp, you get a forty thousand dollars job in New York City. Well, I'll be honest, that kind of sucks. Um, you if you're paying that much money you really should be getting a job like way at least in the 80s really much like higher so look for a um a job guarantee of course of course be on the lookout for that next week guys thank you so much thank you guys so much you're the ones that make this channel you know keep on trucking let's keep growing it make sure to like it like the video make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll get to 150,000 subscribers in no time at all thank you guys so much yeah 17k is really expensive man um I would look at that very, very, very carefully. You can learn all of the skills for free. I'm not saying boot camps aren't worth it. $17,000 is more expensive than some universities. So uh, not saying it's not worth it. Just be very careful. Uh, Jonathan Rains, that is...